All right, Dean Nelson, you want to get us started? Sure, Tiffany. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Well, first of all, let me let me uh, uh, welcome everyone to this uh, CFP information session. I uh, want to thank you for for uh, joining us. Um, second of all, let me recognize and thank uh, Zon Associates for their uh, partnership in offering this uh, CFP. And, and I also want to thank um, Clayton Mack, um, Associate Director of Continuing Education here at, at uh, North Carolina Central University. Um, Clayton has worked tirelessly with uh, Zon and um, the School of Business to develop this program. Um, and then uh, finally, I'd like to thank um, Tiffany Murray, uh, Dr. Tiffany Murray, for her efforts in helping to um, not only establish the Peggy Ward Financial um, Education Center, but also to um, uh, host this uh, program. So thank you, uh, Tiffany. And, you know, we believe that it's absolutely necessary for individuals to, to expand their knowledge of financial education for the families, their community, and, and also the country. Um, you know, it's our hope that um, you will take advantage of, of this program um, so that you will uh, see the tremendous benefits that you can add to uh, the lives of other individuals um, in the area of uh, financial education and financial planning. So, um, uh, again, I, I hope that you find this information session valuable and um, certainly look forward to you matriculating through the, the program. Um, so, uh, Tiffany, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Awesome. Thank you, Dean Nelson. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to thank you all for joining us today to learn a little bit more about uh, the, uh, the CFP um, uh, program that is going to be offered uh, with NCCU. Just a little bit about myself. My name is Tiffany Murray. Uh, as Dean Nelson mentioned, um, I am currently a managing director for a nonprofit. Um, and uh, just uh, again, just a little bit of background as far as you know, me, the, me and the CFP. Um, I actually worked in investment management for about 13 years and got to a point where um, I was not excited about what I was doing on a day to day basis. And uh, prayed about it and just kind of thought, you know, what can I do? Um, and so God said financial planning. And I was like, I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, but uh, I sat, sat with that for two years of, you know, not being excited about what I was doing uh, at my job um, and then, then just decided to take the leap. And so very similar to this program at NCCU, um, I participated with a certification program at UCLA um, and took coursework um, and um, ultimately um, got, you know, received um, this certification for those classes. I then looked to further uh, my opportunities with CFP and found Texas Tech, uh, where I ultimately uh, received a, a PhD in personal financial planning. And so um, just excited about the opportunity to share, um, you know, not only, um, you know, what the CFP is and career opportunities, um, but maybe, you know, this is an opportunity for, for you all um, to experience as well. And so again, we thank you for coming. Um, as Dean uh, Nelson mentioned, I am uh, currently assisting with the Peggy Ward Financial Education Center. Um, and so this uh, center was named after uh, Ms. Peggy Ward, who was a 1974 alum. Um, and during her career um, in the insurance business, she earned numerous awards for her service uh, to customers and in the industry. And so uh, the Financial Education Center uh, well, it's going to be dedicated to certification programs uh, like the CFP, workshops, boot camps, um, you know, providing financial education to uh, high school students, college students, um, and community re residents to uh, make informed, effective uh, financial decisions. And so uh, some of the pilot programs that um, the Petty Ward Financial Education Center is um, working towards um, are the uh, FINRA uh, SIE exam prep and exam, um, also the certified financial planner exam prep and exam, which we'll, we'll, we'll be discussing today. Uh, we also have the SOAR Academy Wealth Management Camp, and that's for high school students um, who'd like to get some more information about financial education. So um, if anybody happens to know any high school students who are interested in doing a, um, a free uh, day camp, uh, please uh, let us know. We can get you more information on that. Um, and then also uh, we're hosting- uh, 
Um, we're also hosting um, an economics and personal finance institute um, for middle school and high school teachers who are working towards um, teaching personal finance classes um, at their respective uh, schools. Um, so just a little bit about uh, the spring and fall program objectives. Um, so I talked a little bit about the SIE, um, just in case you're curious, um, the SIE uh, exam is a FEMRA exam for prospective securities industry professionals. This is an introductory level exam that uh, um, assesses a candidate's knowledge of basic securities, industry information, and things of that nature. And so um, this is a, a new rollout with FEMRA. Ultimately, if you're looking to um, get the Series 6, the Series 7, uh, things of that nature, Series 63, um, certain um, exams that need to be taken, you'll have to get the SIE first. Um, and so we have additional information if anybody is curious about that. Um, but our goal uh, is to get 20 individuals uh, signed up and registered to take that exam. So that's one of the initiatives. Um, and again, what we're here for today is the certified planner um, coursework exam and uh, prep work as well. And so we'll talk a little bit more about um, the incentives and things that will be offered. Um, I want to introduce you all to uh, Taylor Cole, who is going to talk to you all about uh, careers in financial planning and the CFP designation. Uh, Ms. Cole is a client analyst at LFM Wealth Management. Um, she's also the diversity and inclusion director uh, for the FPA um, of the Triangle. So I'm going to turn the floor over to her um, so she can talk to you guys a little bit more about the CFP. Great. Thank you so much, Tiffany and uh, Dean Nelson. So um, I just my title is client analyst because I'm actually a few months out of actually getting my CFP designation. So I'm very excited for that. So I am new in this career. I am a career changer. Uh, I came from the education field. Um, I did not know that CFP existed when I went to college many years ago. So I feel that it's very important to get this career out there so that people know because it is a very important thing for everybody's life to be, you know, educated in their finances, how are they going to retire, all the little things. So for me, that's kind of my initiative. This is why I, you know, joined the FPA of the Triangle. This is why I decided to volunteer for the board so that I can get this career um, out there. So thank you very much for having me. Um, the thing I like the most about financial planning as a career is that it really has changed a lot. So in the sense that finance as an industry, they've kind of done people wrong and financial planning is not that. And they are really working hard, the CFP board to, it's less transactional. They're really making it more people-centered. There is the fiduciary responsibility. So it is more about meeting the client where they are and not just about investments and really building a trusting relationship with the client. So for me, coming from the education field, actually educating clients um, and building a relationship with them is way more important to me than just transactions. Um, so a lot of financial advisors may not do the full financial planning scope. So that is another reason why the CFP board has all these standards when it comes to what financial planning really is. Um, we're really looking at comprehensive and a holistic plan tying multiple things together like taxes, insurance, retirement, estate planning, and also, of course, investments, um, because it really is the full picture that matters. Um, so an organization like the Financial Planning Association, uh, they offer, you know, the knowledge circle, you've got networking events, um, and there is an aspiring student uh, financial planner membership. It's only 50 bucks a year. Um, you can come to our chapter meetings, meet me in person and everybody else, um, and actually learn about and hear the terms of the industry versus just reading the textbook and learning in your classes. I found how different it really can be between you know, reading the textbook and learning that knowledge and then actually applying it. Um, so I joined FPA when I was a student uh, and took advantage of that way lower rate. <laughs> um, and the uh, not only the networking, but it also helped me to get uh, my job, which is great. Um, additionally, the CFP board, I really recommend that you find a mentor. 
and do, go through that mentorship program um, because that is also another way that you can network and get some leadership and find, you know, potentially find a job. <laughs> so that's always great. Um, but yeah, so you know, I just find it really important. Uh, it's to educate people about their finances and be able to answer their questions and just really be an advocate for them and their families. Awesome. Thank you for that, uh, Ms. Cole. Um, and, and we'll have time um, at the end if you have happen to have any questions for, um, for Ms. Cole or anybody on the panel uh, today. Um, next, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Brandon Truitt um, and also Mr. Clayton Mack. And so they're going to um, discuss uh, more about the board register program, how to get registered, the classes that are in, you know, the, the classes that are um, in the program. And so I will turn it over to Mr. Truitt. Hey everybody, my name is Brandon Truitt and I'm one of the uh, instructors for the uh, Zon CFP program uh, that's uh, partnered with um, um, NCCU to, to offer the education portion of the, the CFP. And so we've got just a few things we can talk about uh, as far as uh, how it works. Um, Clayton, did you wanna say hi first before we dive in there too? Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. You know, we're probably taking you away from time with family or time with activities, but this is very important. So once again, my name is Clayton Mack. I'm the Associate Director of Extended Studies, and I've had my toe in the water the entire time as we planned and launched this program. Glad to have such willing uh, partners and Zon Associates and all in the School of Business to bring this to you all because it's very Important. And when I have a chance to speak, I'll speak a little bit more about what was the impetus behind us even beginning this program and why we feel so strongly about it and how in some, some ways we can support you. So, Brandon, you do the ins and outs, nuts and bolts, and I'll come back and tell them why they should why they should join us. OK. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to, to make a few comments on what I heard so far, uh, you know, in our classes, uh, these classes and the review process for the, the CFP program. Very similar to what Taylor described, uh, we we find folks uh, that the networking part of it is pretty influential. That uh, uh, you might be sitting to your next to your next boss in these classes. Uh, we've we've also had people get married in our classes, uh, so I mean that, that could happen too. Um, and and to uh, to some of Tiffany's point, if you really sit back and think about what financial health does for people, uh, it. It's a much more noble profession than it really looks like on the surface. I think on the surface, when you think about it, you're like, oh, well, I help people with their money. That's great. But if you if you take another step back and you think about the goals that people want to accomplish in life, whether it's starting their own business or uh, retiring or taking care of their kids or their families, uh, there's a money element to all of those goals. And I'd, I'd offer my mom real quick as an example there. Um, my mom, her entire life has volunteered with the Special Olympics. And what she really wanted to do was increase that and stop working. But in order to stop working and to afford the time to be able to do that, there's a money element to that goal. Uh, and now my mom, who is five foot and one half inch, uh, she's very proud of her half inch, uh, has a gold medal in the state of Washington because she was the Special Olympics basketball coach uh, for the state of Washington. When she started all this, all she knew was that the ball went in the hoop and uh, had she had to have gone to work full time, uh, she would not have been able to go learn everything about basketball and coach these guys and, and ended up doing a great job with it. And so, I mean, even, even stuff that you don't really think about as having a financial element, she couldn't have done that working 10 hours a day and, and devoted the time that she took to, to do that. And so, I mean, there's just a lot of things that you can help folks accomplish. So I'll get off my soapbox on that and we'll talk about what we're really supposed to talk about here, which is the, the classes and how to go through all of this. So um, I really kind of want to focus on the structure of the program here today. And we have an accelerated program that we offer and it takes about 10 months to go through the program. Um, and uh, the classes are designed for working professionals, uh, people who sort of have eight to five jobs because many of the folks who take these courses with us, uh, do have like full-time financial planning type jobs that they're doing during the week. And oftentimes that means working with customers after hours on the weekdays and things like that. So um, uh, you're gonna go through um, uh, these four week modules. So there's seven courses 
in sort of four week increments. And so one class, for example, is what we have on the right of the screen there, where it would be uh, Friday night and Saturday during the day. And the cadence there is that it's like Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. So it's two Fridays and four Saturdays for each class. And uh, that would take you through like one of the courses. And then generally we would skip two weeks and start the next course and sort of rinse and repeat the same, uh, the same process there. And I can tell you from just working with students uh, through this program, sacrificing uh, what ends up being about two out of six Fridays uh, doesn't end up being that big a deal. Uh, but the Saturday part of this is, is kind of the commitment there that uh, it's a lot of Saturdays, um, but once again, is designed so that folks can do this and continue to go to work at the same time or do whatever it else it is they do during the week. If uh, a, lot, a lot of folks might be students as well that are going to class during the week and that sort of thing. So um, that is the way that, or that is why it's structured the way it's structured. And getting through all of this in 10 months is a is a pretty fast uh, track. I can tell you that uh, I did not take a, a formalized class when I went through the education part of this uh, program. And it ended up taking me, I think, two and a half or three years to get through all these classes because I was just kind of doing it at my own pace and was free to procrastinate it all the time. And I think having a uh, sort of more organized schedule and a class to go through it with is really beneficial. Um, just to kind of keep you on track and get you through this process in a relatively timely, uh, timely manner. So uh, a couple other things with this program, uh, there are no admission requirements here. So you're not actually, uh, you don't have to actually like get into the college. Basically what that means is anybody who wants to take this program can take this program. It is designed for folks who are ultimately gonna sit for the CFP exam. Uh, although we do get folks uh, who sometimes just take it for educational purposes and we do have an audit program uh, if that's the route you're thinking but um uh but the uh, uh there you don't have to like go take the the gmat or the gre or something like that to get in the program or that sort of thing so uh, basically anybody who wants to uh, take it can take it and the um uh the um uh, the the cost of the the classes itself uh, we have the the 825 price tag there at the bottom probably worth knowing that uh, that is the all-in cost for each class uh, there is nothing else you need to buy or pay for uh, except to bring a financial calculator which generally uh, those I think you can pick up on uh, online or at Best Buy probably about thirty dollars or so but short of that calculator uh, that is the full cost of the program that last class is a little more expensive. Um, due to some fees that the, the CFP board is charging for us to submit your material. Uh, so that capstone class is a little more, but uh, uh, all of the other classes uh, are the 825 uh, uh, price tag. So the, uh, the other thing I meant to mention, part of the reason there's no admission requirement and everybody can come take this is that uh, this is not a four credit program in the sense that uh, it does not count for college credit. Uh, it is just designed to get you the credit that you need to uh, to go sit for the CFP uh, exam. And so on this slide, we just kind of break down what each class looks like. Uh, so each of those four week classes um, is 10 lessons and we do like lesson one through four the first weekend, five through eight the, the next weekend and nine and 10 on the third weekend along with some cases. And then that last weekend, we generally do the final exam and I think the, the takeaway from this one is that the board requires you to sit in class for a certain number of hours um, uh, to sort of fulfill your requirement of having gone to these classes. And so most of the work for this program happens inside the classroom. Uh, I think if you look at like what we require outside of class, you're probably looking at maybe two hours a week, three hours a week to do some reading before class. Uh, but the demands outside of the class are not uh, not a ton. Uh, so we have folks who um, ask us, you know, can I take this class and go study for the Series 7 at the same time? And the answer is yes, you can. Or could I take this class and, you know, continue my college studies at the same time? And yes, you can. And so um, most of what we're going to do is on those Friday nights and Saturdays. And the demand outside of that is uh, is not extreme. But I will point out that once you finish these classes, um, the time from when you finish this program and actually go sit for the CFP exam, 
that is uh, a time consuming process. So um, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the window, once you finish these classes, you go take the actual CFP exam. And so that is where you need to make sure that uh, your calendar is clear and you're probably gonna be studying for like three or four hours a day each day. And it's, it generally takes folks probably two or three months to prepare for the actual exam after this. And so it's that two or three months after you finish this that is really where you need to make sure that uh, you can really devote most of your free time to the program. Brandon, um, yeah, is it? I see you sliding back and forth. Uh, can we shrink that? Is it is it cut off for everybody? Everybody's a uh, Zoom, or is it just me? Yeah, if you want to switch, yeah, it's fine. You see if it's far? Okay, might be mine. <laughs> it's far. Yeah, sorry, Clayton. I wasn't sure what else to do with it there. Um, so I think uh, this is probably the the most important slide here of just sort of what the process looks like to become a CFP, like what are the steps you have to go through? And you can see that what we're talking about is the first bullet on the left, which is the uh, 270 hours of board approved education. That's what this program completes for you. That's the seven courses and the things I was talking about in the prior slides. But there are other things required to be uh, a certified financial planner. And so uh, you do have to have uh, some type of bachelor's degree there is an experience requirement, which uh, I know they quoted in thousand hours there, but uh, that top one basically equates to three years of experience in the financial industry. Uh, they do have that bottom one, the apprenticeship pathway. I will mention that I know very few folks who go through that, that for I'd say 95% plus, it's the three years of experience just in any type of like financially related uh, job. Uh, is the experience requirement. And the thing I think to point out about that in the college degree is you don't have to have those to take this program. Uh, it's very common that um, we might get somebody who started a job at you know Charles Schwab last week and they sign up for our program this week and they start the process and that's okay. Uh, just eventually uh, you've got to get the three years and eventually you've got to get the bachelor's degree but I just want to point out those are not prerequisites to come take these classes. It's just something that you eventually need to have completed to, to call yourself a CFP. Then there is the, uh, the background check and the ethics kind of requirement there. Um, if, uh, if you have any concerns there, I would just probably like follow up with this offline. We have dealt with all sorts of various issues uh, uh, as far as that stuff goes. But generally speaking, if you have a job in the financial industry, the background requirements that your firm probably puts you through just to hire you are on par with the same requirements that the CFP has. So if you work at the bank or you work at Schwab or you work at Edward Jones or whatever, if they let you in the door, the CFP will probably let you in the door too. So uh, I think that's probably the easiest way to look at it. But if you do have issues you want to talk about, um, I in particular have helped a lot of folks with a lot of different issues and we can talk about what your issues are and if they're going to keep you from becoming a CFP or whatever, or, or if they're okay or that sort of thing. So uh, just an example there, um, you know, past bankruptcies and things like that can be an issue for becoming a CFP and that sort of thing. So uh, most of the background is related to like financial issues uh, or financial crimes. Uh, you know, they want to make sure that, you know, Bernie Madoff's not signing up to be a CFP and that sort of thing. So um, uh, that's kind of the, the the point of it there. And then the exam itself is the uh, kind of most difficult part of this process, as I kind of alluded to earlier. We have folks take this exam uh, from all walks of life, and we have had lawyers that tell, tell us it's harder than the bar, uh, CPAs tell us it's harder than the CPA, We've had doctors come and tell us it's harder than the boards you got to take to go be a doctor. Uh, it is a very difficult exam. And I think for most folks, it'll be the most difficult exam you ever take. And I would just say it is kind of one of those like purposefully mean kind of out to get you type uh, tests that, that nobody really likes. It's, it's probably the king of those type of tests. Um, and so it is just a tough process to go through. Uh, but it is a one day, uh, like a, a six hour style, uh, multiple choice test that's taken at Prometric, uh, which is kind of a private testing facility. 
And if you get into financial services, you'll spend a lot of time at Prometric. Uh, that's where you take the series six and the seven and uh, all your other exams uh, that you got to got to do in this industry. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, it is a multiple choice test, but it is a very, very difficult multiple choice test. So um, a little more on the test here. You can only take it three times a year in March, July and November. And the national pass rates fluctuate between about 58 to 67 percent. I think on the surface of that, you look at that and you're like, well, gosh, about two thirds of the people who go take it uh, pass it. That looks pretty good. But what I'd urge you to remember here is that everybody who goes and takes this test took a year of these classes and uh, and they studied for three months to go take this thing. If it was just folks walking in off the street, I think two thirds would look pretty good. But if you kind of take into account that these a third of people who are super prepared to go take it are still struggling with it. Uh, I think it does kind of speak to the difficulty level of the exam and the rigor required to, to get through it. Um, and I think I hit on the rest of us. It, it is 170 questions is the, the total amount there spread into two, uh, two three hour blocks. And then just a few, uh, a few notes on, on our program here. So um, I'm not going to hit on, on all of these, but um, one uh, one thing with the the folks who teach with us, all of our instructors uh, can and do teach all of the classes, uh, which is a little different than some of the other programs out there. So uh, a lot of times in these types of programs, when you get to the tax class, uh, a tax expert will come in and talk to you. But if you ask that person something about investments, uh, they don't know the answer to that. And uh, it's a little different with us. All of our teachers teach all of the stuff. So if you're in estate planning and you want to ask somebody a, you know, a ethics question, they'll know the answer to it and uh, and can help you with anything you want to ask along the way. I think that's a big benefit to our program. Um, and uh, the, uh, the design for uh, the program we're looking at here is set to get you guys to sit for the November 2024 exam. So you know, you could uh, roughly get all of this accomplished uh, in, in a little more than a year or so uh, from now uh, and, and get a get the designation. And the last bullet on the right, I think, is a, a pretty telling one that um, for folks who go through the education process with us and take the review uh, process after that to kind of prepare for the test, uh, the pass rates on that have been in like the 85 to 95 percent range. And um, I don't know that there's uh, many other programs that can throw that type of number around. Uh, we have a lot of experience with the exam uh, itself and just sort of what it's like and how to prepare you for it. And I think it does put you in a pretty good position to get ahead of that uh, two third average uh, that we saw on the page before. So um, I gave you a bit of a, a shortened version of this, but uh, to sign up for the program, um, uh, and if you have questions about uh, the kind of the program side or signing up or things like that, Clayton is definitely a great person to talk to there. If you do have questions about the like content of the program, uh, the Zon team may be a better better uh, outlet for that. So, you know, if you want to know what do we study in income tax, I could probably answer that uh, uh, versus Clayton, but uh, just kind of depends what your questions are. I think for most of you, your next steps here would be to, to contact Clayton if you're ready to go and want to sign up for this. Uh, it is a great thing to add uh, to your, your uh, resume and to your skills here, and I think goes a long way in helping folks sort of um, create their, their own legitimacy in this industry. Um, and I'd offer myself as an example there. I graduated from college with a degree in English and philosophy, and uh, went into financial services because I don't know, what can I do with an English degree, right? Uh, so I had to go get a real job. Uh, but, you know, walking in, even for myself, <clears throat> I felt um, unqualified for the job, you know? And so this helped me, uh, you know, at least establish my own credentials for myself to feel good about what I was telling people. It certainly helped, you know, prove to my boss that I could do it too, but uh, uh, it does go a long way to help make sure that you have um, all of the skills you need to go sit down and, and talk to folks about their money. This is uh, probably the most advanced designation you can get in this industry um, uh, as far as uh, the amount of stuff you're gonna learn. As Taylor mentioned, uh, it is across several disciplines, be it tax, insurance, uh, investments, estate, et cetera. Um, it does teach you really all the stuff you need to know to sit down and 
make a plan for somebody on how to handle all aspects of their finances. And so I think it's a great program. And uh, uh, with that, I will uh, let Clayton uh, chime in there a little bit and also just see what questions you guys have uh, on all of this. All right, thank you, Brandon. Once again, we always appreciate you coming to uh, co-host these sessions with us. Uh, once again, I'm Clayton Mack. Just wanted to get some background on the program. Um, the, the wonderful efforts of the Certified Financial Planner Board and FPA and their, associ their association uh, indicated the need for diversifying this industry. Um, when we started planning this program two years ago, we saw that there, I mean, the percentage of African Americans participating or that had this designation was really, really low. I think about 1.8%. Um, and so as part of a overarching effort to get more of us into this field, because we do know there are a lot of African Americans and uh, people of uh, ethnic, different ethnic backgrounds working in the field, but a lot of them don't have this designation. So we are embracing their, their DEI initiatives to try to help them get to their goals. Um, as far as the industry overall, there are 95,000 uh, certified financial play planners nationwide. Um, about 23 and a half percent of them are women. And so we wish to improve those numbers across the board with minorities because, you know, when you're interacting with people, this is a very, very social career field and you're interacting with people and it's good to have people that you may have some uh, cultural uh, connection with. And so that was a major impetus behind uh, this program. The, the, we did a lot of research. Um, there aren't very many HBCUs that offer this program. And the majority of them, I think there is only one other one that actually offers a program that's designed for working adults and professionals. Everybody else, as Brandon mentioned, uh, are offered theirs in for credit. Um, and so we decided to go in another direction such that we can attract people who are already working and are intentional about uh, getting this designation, because as Brandon said, it's not easy. Um, as a traditional undergraduate, it may be a bit difficult, uh, but for those of you who are working in the field, this is exactly what you might need, but it's not impossible. Um, also wanted to say that I, on, on the sheet, it said October 10th, that's last year's presentation, classes will start September 8th, uh, 2023, and the last day to register is 8-25-2023. Uh, we generally have our last day to register about two weeks before the start of classes, and unlike many other programs, each of these is a separate module. You don't have to take all of them at one time. You can wait for it to wrap around, or you can pick and choose, uh, especially in the lower level once you get to level module four and five, yeah, we got to slow you down a little bit because you missed some stuff. But this will allow you, to, if those of you who may be looking for um, more information than actually qualifying to sit for, I'll give a good, good example someone gave before. Uh, someone may have had someone recently deceased in the family and they came into money. So want, want, wanting to learn about estate planning from that perspective can be beneficial to you. And the 825, even though it may appear at first, to not be competitive with our with our uh, peers in this space, the difference is we give you textbooks, and a lot of them they may it may be six twenty five, but you have to pay for your sex textbooks materials separately. So that's another thing. And the other really really overarching um, overarching goal is to make sure that you're well equipped to pass. And Zion Associates is just the best of the business. I did when we first started communicating with them, I did a lot of research <laughs> on everybody, uh, whether it was self-paced or whether it was offered by a company or whether it was offered by uh, whatever, whatever service. And we just found that their, um, their methods were putting them above and beyond everybody else in terms of producing people who can pass the test. So that is the reason why we're doing this. Uh, if you all are interested in signing up or want to talk more, of course, I'm more on the registration side and I am tied to the university. I work there, uh, but we are enrolling. It's open now. <laughs> you can start enrolling whenever you're ready. I'll post the link in the chat. Um, and if you have other questions, please feel free to, to ask at this time. So if we're a student at NCCU, we have to pay the five thousand dollars plus the the fees for books and stuff like that. Or no? 
The $5,000, $5,850 is for all seven classes. Um, we will offer a discount if you pay, if you decide to take all seven classes of $200, but it does not count under your tuition and fees. This is non-credit. Um, the average student or average participant rather in this program is funded by their employer. Um, we don't stop anybody who wants to pay, but there are some options which we'll mention very soon. So hold on, like I told you in the PM, hold on a second and the wink. Okay. <laughs> anyway, who's next? So there was a there was a question in the chat. What happens if I if I take this course but but don't have the experience? And so you you don't have to have the experience to take the course. That is that is worth pointing out. Um, but once again, in order to, to call yourself a CFP, you eventually have to get that some level of experience in the industry. I cannot remember off the top of my head, uh, Taylor or Tiffany, you might be closer to this than I am, but I believe that it's five years from taking the test that you need to get the experience, maybe 10. It, you guys is, know? So, it is, yeah. So it's it's 10 years, any, any uh, experience 10 years before you take the exam and then five years after. So okay. it actually has quite a large amount of time. So, so Brian, if you were to go out and get a job and you're taking the courses, but you haven't passed the exam yet, you could actually go ahead and start accumulating experience. Um, yeah. And the classes don't expire. So, you know, you could, you could say, take class one today, go get a job and work there five years and then take the rest of the classes and you're good. You know I mean? So the, the, there is a limit. There's a, there's a ticking clock on the experience part, but there really is no ticking clock on these uh, classes. If you take it today, as far as I know, it's good forever and will always count for you as far as whatever process you made so far. Uh, Taylor had a good point there that for that clock to start, you actually have to go take the test. And so you could just kind of delay taking the test until you got a job or that sort of thing uh, down the road. You have um, you have five years after the date of test yet to get your three years of experience. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, certainly plan it out a little. Um, that's I actually did not get. I um, started working in the industry in August of 2020. I passed my exam November of 2020, so I was a bit of a late starter on the experience yeah. myself. <laughs> and that's and that's not unusual. <laughs> There's a question: What are the hours needed to sit for the exam? So um, there's maybe a couple answers to that, James. Um, <clears throat> the required hours are that you have to sit through these education classes. Like you have to take these seven classes, be they from us in this program or somebody else out there. You know, you got to take those classes one way or another. Um, it's kind of just number of hours that, you know, you need to be in a seat uh, listening to somebody like me talk. You know, that's, that's just that. If you're and that tallies up to about 270 education hours. But uh, after you finish that, I think what you might be asking um, is, you know, how much do I need to study to prepare for the actual test? Uh, that number is pretty similar. Uh, most of the students I talk to quote me numbers in the 200 to 300 hour range that they spend uh, independent of everything we just talked about here, but just two to 300 hours on their own that they spend preparing to go sit for the actual exam. And so I normally have folks split the difference and shoot for about 250 uh, that you're gonna be studying and reviewing, um, you know, the type of material you looked at in these education classes to go sit for the exam. So whether you're talking about how much in classes I gotta go sit for, or how much do I need to review on my own, they both work out to about 250 hours. So, um, uh, but do realize it's not the same 250 hours that you would do this and then it's probably about 250 on your own after that uh, to go sit for the test. And uh, Michael had asked if there's any annual fees required to maintain the CFP designation. And I'll just throw out there as a general statement, Michael. Um, as far as I know, everything that puts letters after your name that's not like a college degree, you know, so not a PhD or a master's or something like that, anything else in the world that puts letters after your name does have a fee on it. So. Uh, the CFP is one of the more expensive ones out there, uh, and Clayton is correct there. It's uh, 355 uh, due every two years, though. I, so it's, uh, was that, about 180 a year, something like that, or um, I don't know, my math might be wrong there, but uh, um, uh, that 355 is every two years. 
Uh, Taylor and Brandon, if you don't mind, I, I don't recall if you said this in your presentation, but what is the salary difference between someone who has a CFP designation and someone who's working in the industry without the CFP designation? Sure. So um, I didn't spend a lot of time on that slide, and Taylor, I'll let you kind of throw your okay. cents on it in too, but uh, it is a slide in the deck, but um, they looked at several different snapshots of people and just the difference that the CFP made. But at nine years in the industry, I think the numbers the board put out was uh, the average financial professional at year nine was making about 100,000. The average CFP was making about 150,000. Uh, so it was uh, a pretty substantial difference, especially if you look at it from a percentage standpoint, you know, they're making 50% more money. That's quite a bit. Um, uh, and it's, uh, it's something that anecdotally, I can tell you folks, in our classes and in our programs, almost everybody who comes and sits in this class gets promoted at some point in the class. Uh, it's, it's kind of uncanny at the rate at which it happens. And so you look at, you know, would I make more money in the job I have? The answer to that question is yes, probably so. But what ends up happening more often than not is I think people just go get better jobs. Uh, and that, is kind of what Taylor, I think, was talking about, uh, kind of through networking and that sort of thing. Um, but also just you learning the stuff, you just get better at what you're trying to do and and people can see the difference and and uh, and it, it pays off. So anything you'd add, uh, Taylor? No, I absolutely agree with you. And just getting like the broad knowledge of, you, you know, what financial planning really is. Um, you know, if you're just working in your in your one job and you're doing, you know, let's say investments or the one thing, um, you know, you're, you may be boxed in or just hit a ceiling. So um, CFP, you know, you, you just get so much more knowledge. Um, and absolutely. I mean, I think that it really brings a lot to, you know, the designation really brings a lot to you because you do have that fiduciary responsibility, whereas a financial advisor just using that, that title doesn't really have that. So um, that's really a key difference. Yeah, and I'll tell you, um, just to give you a real world example of, of what Taylor's talking about, I worked at Fidelity for many years, helping people with how to invest their money. But I never would have thought to talk to anybody about Social Security and Medicare. And you learn about how to talk to folks about that. And literally everybody in America needs help with Social Security and Medicare at some point in their life. You know, it's something that it's a conversation everybody needs to have at some point. But yet nobody taught me how to do that. And, and I couldn't work that into what I was helping people try to do. And most of the folks I talked to at Fidelity were folks who were retiring and needed to have the conversation. And, uh, and I just wasn't competent to have it until going through all this. And so that's the kind of stuff we're talking about when we look at sort of this more holistic view of things. Um, it's just, uh, I, I think a lot of the things that your, uh, your own ignorance on the topic keeps you from talking about it, or you're scared to talk about it. And, uh, and rightfully so, you don't want to tell people the wrong things and that sort of stuff. So um, I think it, it goes a long way for that. And, and when, when you can provide that type of value on several different front, fronts to clients, they realize that that's, that's better than talking to me from 15 years ago who didn't know that, you know? So uh, um, it just, it works out better for you. They'll send you customers, your, your boss will notice, your clients will notice, it just kind of, everything kind of seems to take care of itself. Right. Any more questions? I, I just wanted to point out to go in a different direction. This is kind of tangential, but this is one of, I think, only, I think there are four programs nationwide that offer, it has a digital credential associated with this program. And of course, I mean, digital badges. We've run it through Credly, and I did post a link in there earlier. Not very many of us, and um, I think it's just three universities. The others are, you know, uh, they, they specialize in in teaching management and financial management. But uh, yeah, so that makes us unusual. And it is a way to express the fact that you've completed this course uh, when you finish it. All right, well, thank you all so much for um, your questions and, and, and uh, thank you so much for those answers. And we'll have a little bit more time um, to, to answer any more questions that you have. But next I wanna talk briefly about um, some of the financial incentives um, that uh, we may be able to offer you all. So uh, we were fortunate to receive a grant. Uh, the Peggy Ward Financial Education Center 
um, receive the grant. And so, um, you know, to, to help, you know, in, incentivize you and to, you know, encourage you all to, um, you know, join, join us. Um, what we'd like to offer um, is uh, 20 scholarships um, for a CFP course. Um, and so Mr. Mack and, and, and Mr. Truett mentioned the breakdown of each course. Um, so there are, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Mack, six courses at 825 and the capstone is at 900. Um, and so again, what we'd like to offer, um, you know, those who are interested, um, we uh, do uh, the one, one CFP course. And we probably do that around midway, um, just to make sure you're sure that this is what you want to do. Um, so that's one of the offerings um, that will be um, uh, provided. Um, we also like to um, provide five sco five scholarships um, for that great uh, CFP exam prep program um, that that Brandon talked about. And so with a ninety percent uh, pass rate, that is uh, an excellent deal. And so um, you know what will happen is. Um, We'd like to you know, encourage people to register, um, and then um, and I'll, I'll share I'll show share next steps. But um, just want to quickly talk about those uh, particular incentives, um, and then ask you if you guys have any questions about that. Um, and and again, we can continue with the conversation um, around CFP and coursework, and you know different opportunities um, with financial planning. So. Again, just want to open it back up for questions if you happen to have anything about the incentives or um, about any questions pertaining to financial planning. So I'd also like to uh, introduce Jamima Stratford. Um, she's assisting the uh, Peggy Ward Financial Education Center as well. Um, I met her um, at Texas Tech University while well, I was working on my PhD and she was working on her master's degree um, in personal financial planning. And she's a, a financial planner as well. And so um, again, just want to open the floor um, to any questions that that you all may have. And and uh, Tiffany, I was just going to add that there are um, lots of scholarships out there from the CFP board and oftentimes the local FPA chapters um, that, to my knowledge, money generally gets left on the table for these scholarships. It just not enough people apply for them. And so if if the pricing of this is an issue, there are several different avenues to explore. I think great for the ones you guys are offering, but I did just want to point out that there are, um, you know, if one class isn't going to cut it for you, for example, or whatever, uh, there are definitely other ways to solve that problem out there. And uh, just talk to, I think Taylor probably get you in the right direction, Tiffany get you in the right direction, I get you in the right direction, uh, just talk to us and, and we can definitely help with, uh, with that uh, as well. Thank you for that, Brandon. Yes, I know FPA of the Triangle, we do offer a, a scholarship for a student. So yeah, please reach out, um, happy to talk. And I just put in the link for the to the CFP uh, website where you can also apply for scholarships. Yeah, and if I can jump in, I, I field probably four emails and three calls a week from firms <laughs> wanting me to Want to get connected to our our for our groups is going right now. So yeah, it, it's a hot hot field, and they're looking for uh, people from this program and all over. All right. So we've got a question from Mr. Franklin about how can we join the FPA student program, and that may be directed toward uh, Ms. Taylor. I am just going to hunt down the link for you right now. <laughs> and we've got so many great links in the chat. What we'll do is we'll uh, collect those um, and we'll make sure that those get sent out to everybody just so everybody's on the same page. And, yeah, and I would... if, if you just go on Financial Planning Association, you can, a membership is up in the top left corner and you can kind of navigate through, um, but there's just one for the triangle. Yeah, I would, I would just point out that I didn't know FPA existed as a student. And if you're interested in jobs in this inter industry, <clears throat> the FPA is really the, the place to go to meet the right people for that. I went to, to Texas A&M and when I went to all my career fairs and when they brought employers on campus and that sort of thing, we maybe got one or two folks from this industry that showed up, you know, next to you know, Lockheed Martin or whoever, you know, Nike or whoever else was gonna show up that day. Um, I think if you're really, if you know this is your industry, you can basically get to any company through the FPA. Somebody, 
somebody from everywhere is in is a member uh, of of the chapter. So they, no matter where you want to go, I think uh, that'd be a great place to go find employers uh, who are interested in you. It's it, it's absolutely true. I mean, there's there's not only the state level, the chapter level. There's the national level, um, which offers a lot of things, and there is a job board on there. So. <laughs> All right. Any any more questions? Oh, yes, we've got one question. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I came on late. I came on at after you all had started, so I, I probably missed something. But um, I'm just wondering if this program is, um, would you recommend this program for someone who's just wanting to get into this industry, like switching careers? Um, social worker has seen social workers have lack of money as they have matriculated through their careers and interested in educating other people about um, financial literacy and, and the topics that you mentioned. So is this something that you would recommend for someone changing careers into this career field? Yeah, and I might, Tiffany, I might have you weigh in on this one a little bit too, but, uh, but yes, um, part of the story I, I kind of mentioned about myself was I came into this industry from a totally different background myself. And I personally just didn't feel comfortable talking to people about this. I, I felt like I didn't have the expertise and this is the program to kind of give you that expertise. Uh, it is uh, one of the highest level designations you can get in this industry. It's kind of like the master's degree of this industry. So you are going to learn all of the stuff you would need to learn. I would say if you want to, if your goal is to continue in the social work arena, um, you may just want to pursue like the audit version of the class uh, rather than kind of the the official CFP version of the class, which uh, just the pricing's a little different, but everything else is the same. Um, but if you eventually, if you are going to change industries and go into actual financial services, um, just the normal version of this class would be 100% what you're looking for. Uh, it's funny you say that. I'm actually tutoring a social worker right now who's sitting for the test in uh, uh uh, in uh, in July here, and so uh, yes, it's absolutely the right uh, the right path. Uh, Tiffany, I think it kind of it seemed like it might be up your alley a little bit on this one, so I was going to let you throw in a little bit there too. Absolutely. So I shared just a little bit about my background, but um, I was actually in um, investment management. I actually started with Countrywide. If you guys are familiar with the 2008 housing crisis, okay. that was our company. It wasn't me. I was not in that department, <laughs> um, but that was our company. And so from there. I moved over to Western Asset Management, which is an investment management firm. Um, and like I shared a, a bit earlier, just got into a situation where I made good money, but I didn't enjoy what I was doing on a day-to-day -day basis, right? We were helping large institutional clients and I just didn't feel like that passion. I wasn't fulfilled. Um, and so absolutely. Um, so, you know, I took courses at um, UCLA while working full-time. So I didn't mention that. Um, and so, you know, Brandon shared that that particular path that he took. And so it did take me um, about two and a half years. Um, however, with this program, is, it is, um, you know, modified um, to get done within 10 months, which I think is excellent, right? Um, especially for a professional who's working. So um, absolutely, I, I'd highly recommend it. Um, my, my path is a little bit different. And so I will also share, um, I never thought that I would be a financial planner, but I want to educate. Um, and so my goal is to, um, you know, provide financial education um, to um, a, an age range of um, students from 14 to 21. Um, so high school students and college students. Um, and so, you know, having that foot in the door with financial education, then I got my PhD um, in, in, in um, personal financial planning to teach um, at a higher level. Um, and so, yes, absolutely. I, I highly encourage it. Um, and there's so, so much that has been done and, and talked about, especially with social work. Um, because not only you talk about the social workers, but you talk about the people that, you know, you're helping. They need that help, too. Um, and so um, absolutely, I, I highly encourage um, encourage it um, and, and look forward to, you know, if you if you want to chat more, um, you know, about it. But um, hopefully you've heard enough to get you like ready and motivated to, to start that first um, first step. But absolutely, I think that, you know, you're definitely, um, you know, seeking at the right time, um, especially if you feel, you know, that it's time to make that career shift. So I, I highly recommend it. Yeah, yeah. and I, th I think that um, it, another soapbox I have on this is if you think about the major issues that you see across our country today, 
And I think particularly as somebody coming from a social work background, how many of the issues <clears throat> that you see are actually related to financial problems. And that had these folks, whoever you're dealing with and whatever their problem was, had they been financially secure, what would their issues look like then? Um, you know, and it's just, it is such an important element to that. And in, in my head, um, I imagine a country where everybody makes good financial decisions and what does that look like versus the country we live in today? Uh, and I think that there is a, there is a real nobility there and trying to be the, the tip of the sword on that to, to help spread that to the people. Um, I also kind of think it's a little bit criminal that you can graduate from high school and not know what health insurance is or how to sign up for a 401k or you know, all that sort of stuff, you know? So um, anything that folks can do to, to keep spreading that uh, across the country, I think is a great thing to do. And this is, this is definitely uh, a, a good avenue to, to start that. Thank you for that. All right, and I'm, I'm just gonna try to respect everybody's time as far as, you know, it's now 7.30. We can continue with questions. If you'd like to stay on and ask your person a question, um, please feel free or, and if, you know, if our panelists need to drop off, we can direct your questions um, to the appropriate party. But just wanna share with you guys next step, Mr. Mack mentioned it. Um, you know, the first goal was to register um, for the first class um, to become a part of the fall 2023 cohort. Um, and then after registration, um, what we'll do we'll, is we will provide you with the link um, to apply for both of the scholarships that were mentioned. So that was um, the, the opportunity to get one course paid for, um, and then also to get the exam prep um, from Zon paid for as well. Um, all right, and so um, that is all we have. Um, we, I do, do see another question in the chat. Um, we'll, again, we'll get you all of the information that was shared in the chat. In the chat. If you need to drop off, Please feel free. Um, thank you again for, for joining us. We absolutely appreciate you. Um, and we'll get that information to you. But um, just want to take this time to just, you know, ask, answer some of these questions that are, are still coming through. So there was a, another question in the chat here about the cost difference on the audit versus the, the regular program. I haven't worked with an audit student in a little while. Clayton, do you know the exact difference? Uh, on the cost there, I, I, in the past, it was generally like a couple hundred dollars cheaper, but I, I don't know the exact pricing. Do you know? I, I do not. I'm looking at my primer. I, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. But my email's in chat. If you email me about it, I will get an answer for you. Uh, but to, to give you the general answer, I think the last time I did it, I think it was like $200 cheaper than the than the full version. Uh, I could be wrong, uh, but um, like instead of 825, like 625 or something like that, it's, I, I believe that's what it was, but it's been, I think three or four years since I had an audit student in class. So I'm, you can't quote me on that. But that, uh, to your point, I think for what you're trying to do, uh, Shalisha, I, I think that the audit is the right path for you. Like, I, I think you're, you're thinking about it the right way here for, for I think what you're trying to trying to do. Um, I just can't give you the exact number on it right this second. Thank you. Sure. All right, and we had another question from Mr. Franklin about um, where do we register? All right, awesome. Um, yeah, the, the link is in the chat. If you, this is the NCCU branded page, but if you scroll about a third of the way down, you'll see enroll now. That will take you to a calendar. And you'll see different classes that continuing education offers. You want to scroll down one and go to Certified Financial Planner Module One General Principles, September 8th. And then you'll see a register now button. All right. Any more questions? All right, we'd like to thank you all again for your participation today and thank you for your interest. Um, we'll follow up with additional uh, information for you. Um, and again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we'd be more than welcome to and try to answer those questions and get it to the right person. If we can't per personally answer the questions, we'll get those um, to the right party. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. everyone.